Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we're gonna be testing this weird-ass makeup applicator. As you gorgeous people know, this is about the product, not the people behind it. Any tip you may have with them, please cast it away, because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. Also, before we get too far into this, if you're not already and you'd like to be, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. And of course, please subscribe to my social media stuff. It's right there. Yes, yeah, see it? Back to this little baby. This is the Color Me Pro Automatic Foundation Applicator. This is supposed to keep your makeup on magically for eight hours. I'm not quite sure how it does that, but I am so fucking down to try. This was sent to me from Color Me for free. Thank you, baby. But just like anything that's sent to me or anything that's sponsored, I will only review it if I can give my 100% honest opinion and of course I will give my honest opinion about this because otherwise what the fuck is the point and I honestly am really curious about this because last time we tried anything sonic it was terrible I think it was the Michael Todd sonic brush it sucked ass it worked for some people but not me so I'm curious to know if this little baby works like said this is the color me pro edition this retails for $68 so if this works I mean then it's worth it but that is no small fee but apparently this is an all-in-one sonic applicator for eight hours superior coverage this says it's supposed to replace your hand your foundation brush your Boutetse blender, and your powder brush. It's like an all-in-one device. So, I mean, if it works, that definitely is worth the money. The back says this is a sonic applicator for eight hours of poreless base coverage. This all-in-one tool is turbocharged to deliver longer wearing coverage with any foundation or powder. It has 1,500 sonic pulses per minute and delivers long-lasting, more flawless coverage than ever before while blurring fine lines and diminishing the look of pores. Not gonna lie, this does kind of sound like one of those devices that is too good to be true, but you never know, it might work. Okay, so my ass thought this was was some like really innovative thing and you put your makeup on there and it just like magically blended into your skin but this is the case. The little device has a very plush, soft, velvety feel. It almost feels like the doe foot end of a lipstick applicator. It's very nice feeling. And I like that unlike the last Sonic brush that we tested, this is not bristles, so I'm guessing it won't really soak up as much of the product. And it does come with an extra little fuzzy butt. That's what I decided to call these because these feel like a very, very soft ass cheek. Ooh. But for anyone wondering, they're actually called universal sponges, but I'ma still call them little fuzzy butts. It does include batteries. You just have to pull this little, ooh, damn, it's already vibrating. This baby is ready to get to work. Can you hear it? It sounds like one of my favorite vibrating things ever. My phone. What did you think, you nasty? Get your mind out the gutter. Color Me was very kind and they also sent me over, I think this is a foundation. I'm a little bit confused because it says a hydrating glow and I'm not really sure if this is a BB cream or a legit foundation. It does say you can build it for coverage, so I'm guessing it's a foundation. I think because I personally am really curious how this works with other foundations, we'll go in and use this kind of as a primer or a base and then I'll go in with a normal foundation over that. This is the Color Me Pro edition underglow hydrator in the shade the fuck shade is this in the shade 020 medium they do say to apply this directly to the sponge and if it's a new sponge you need to kind of season it by really coating it first so i'm just gonna slather a shit ton of it on there i guess that seems like a good amount i'm really not sure but i did prime my face with the nyx primer and so I guess we'll just vibrate this and oh damn let's quick put a little bit here and there and then uh, it feels really good. Ooh, and it does seem to look pretty good on the skin. I might have to add a little bit more foundation. Oh my. This applicator though is just so fucking soft. Holy shit balls. Definitely gonna need a little bit more though. Oh, it feels so nice. Uh. Not gonna lie though, I'm not really certain like what this is doing. Maybe it's more the fact that because it's vibrating the product into my skin, it'll last longer. It blended out very easily and like I didn't have to tug on my skin at all like I would with a brush. So I mean, that is a plus. It does look a little bit weird in my nose area, but I think that's because I really need to exfoliate it. I mean, not bad. What do you guys think? Let's go ahead and try this with a normal foundation. This is Cork by EVXO and I'm just gonna put a few pumps just like that. Ooh, oh my. This actually does blend it out really, really nicely. The only issue I'm having is right here at the bottom of my nose. Foundation just won't seem to lay there, and so you can see the redness of my skin. I don't typically have that. I don't know if it's the foundation that I used or what, but it's really kind of weird to me. And I do also want to say that this does lay kind of oddly in facial hair, like right here on my upper lip. It just isn't blending out. It looks kind of chunky. So I'm wondering if it's actually the first foundation that I used. Maybe it just does not go good with my skin. So I think I'm actually gonna wipe this off and start over with like my own foundation. All right, my face has been wiped clean. I honestly cannot thank Color Me enough for sending me this. That was a very, very generous, but for some reason it just does not work with my skin. That's not to say it won't work with your skin, but for me, it just didn't work. And it does say that you can layer this up, which is what I did, but I didn't really care for the way it looked. So I will keep using this and 
let you know what I think of it in the future as my skin changes. I think for now, we're just gonna go in with a plain ass foundation. This is the Wet n Wild Cream Beige, and I know I use this a lot on this channel, but I really, really like this foundation. So I'm just gonna smear this on both sides of my face, and I think on this side of my face, I'll use the device, and then on this side of the face, I'll just use a normal beauty blender. <gasps> I dropped it on my pants. I really need to stop wearing nice pants when I'm filming. I could be naked under here for all you guys know. Now it looks like I got a fucking handy J mid take. Anyways, that should do it. So let's go ahead and apply this side. Ooh, that does make it apply very, very nicely and smoothly. It just makes it look like there's nothing on my skin. But for some reason, I'm not really certain if this is as full coverage as it normally is with like a beauty blender or a brush. So I guess we'll have to see once I get to the other side. But I am not gonna lie, this actually does look really really, really pretty on the skin. Like it blended out so nicely. Let's try the other side. This is just a normal dry beauty blender. So while the beauty blender does blend it out very nicely and effortlessly, it does look a little bit more cakey than the other side, which is kind of interesting because I never really thought this was a cakey foundation, but comparing the sides, this one definitely looks a lot smoother. It is still creasing the exact same underneath my eyes on both sides. I mean, that would be some serious Harry Potter magic shit for it not to. The directions do say that you can apply pretty much all of your face makeup using this device. So I am gonna go ahead and do this. So far, I do like the device side better, but I'm not sure that it's $70 better. For concealer, of course, I'm a basic ass hoe, so I'm going in with my Tarte Shape Tape. This is in the shade Light, which I know is too light for my skin, but it's all this bitch has, so we're gonna use it. And of course, for this side, we will go in with the device. This does seem to be blending out very easily and very nicely. I do really like that this does not pull at your skin at all. Like, you just set it on there, and it pretty much blends itself out. So if you're somebody who's at that point in their life where they're starting to develop wrinkles, this would definitely be a very good investment for you. And then we'll go in with the booty blender on this side. For powder, I'm just gonna start by setting underneath the eyes. It does say to dip it directly into the powder. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. Honestly, I don't even know that I wanna turn this on. I'm kinda scared that powder will go everywhere. Let's see. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's try to set it underneath there, just like that. Ooh, that goes on so fucking nicely. Oh. Oh, look at how beautiful that looks. For some reason, I always get so fucking turned on whenever anybody puts a nice, clean under eye powder on. Oh, I guess since there's so much on my brush, let's just go ahead and set the rest of this half of my face with that powder. Mmm. Ooh, yes, that actually does look really good. And even though I have quite a few products on my face, it still looks natural and not super Super caked up. Let's go ahead and do the same with the beauty blender side. And I put so much powder on this beauty blender and that's what I got. Like the application does not look nearly as good. So for powders, I think this thing is really good. Oh, there we go. I just needed to apply a fuck ton. And let's go ahead and set the other half of my face. So with the beauty blender, I noticed that it's a little bit more difficult to actually press the powder into my skin. Whereas on this side, it just kind of like melted in there. And on this side, you can just see it sitting on top of it, which really is not that big of a deal. I just thought that was kind of of interesting. I'll end up dusting all this off anyways, but it makes me wonder if because the powder was pressed into my skin, that's what helps it last longer. Maybe if I really press that powder into my skin, but oh, that kind of hurts. Okay, so I just went out of this room and looked around in different mirrors under different lighting, and I gotta say I honestly love the way this side looks. Like, they do look very similar, but this side is just porous and kind of like on the wrinkly side, and this side is so fucking smooth, so I'm really honestly loving the way this is so far. Let's wipe this under eye powder off so we can get a real good look. I'm not really even sure that you guys will even be able to tell, but to me, when looking up close, this side just looks so so much better. It turned this really, really inexpensive foundation into something that looks so good, which I thought it looked really good normally, but comparing the sides, this side is just so fucking smooth and almost airbrushed looking. What do you guys think? Do you even see a difference between the Color Me side and the Beauty Blender side? Like, to me, I just see a big difference, but it might not even register on camera. I am gonna wear this for a few hours, see how they wear, but a lot of people on Twitter ask that I do a makeup tutorial when I do these kind of reviews, so let's just quick do an eye look, and we we can see how everything wears together. My eyes are all primed and to set that primer, I'm gonna go in with this Real Her 2 palette. This is the shade Driven and I'm taking it on a big fluffy brush and we'll just set that all over the eye. And then in that same palette, I'm gonna take a little bit of Invincible. It's this nice warm shadow and I'm just gonna place that right here in the crease and blend the fuck out of it. I cannot stop staring at this foundation just right there. It looks so 
fucking soft. Holy shit. Next, I'm going in with Indomitable, and I'm just gonna place that right here underneath where we just went. And when that's all blended out, I'm just gonna pack a little bit more right there on the outer corner. In the Real Her One palette, I'm taking some of Creative. It's this nice mauve shimmer. I really, really like it, and I'm just placing that on a flat brush, and we'll place it right here on the inner corner. And once most of it is off the brush, I'm gonna kind of drag that towards the outer corner of the eye. I'm gonna place a little bit more of Indomitable right there because we did lose some of that darkness. For the under eye, I'm smoking out Invincible on a little pencil brush. For a little touch of shimmer on the under eye, I'm gonna go in with this Lord and Berry strobing pencil and just put that on the waterline. And what the hell, we might as well highlight the inner tear duct while we're at it. I was gonna go in with liner and do a dramatic wing, but I'm kind of feeling this nude look, so I'm just gonna put on falsies. These are the Forever Lux Luxury Silk Collection lashes. I love these things. These are in the style Dreamer. Oh, I love these lashes. Eyes are done. I did go in and contour and add a little bit of blush. And now for highlighter, I'm going in with Jeffree Star's Rose. What the fuck is this? Peach Goddess. That's what it is. And we'll place a little bit right there. Oh, yes. And down the nose and a little bit on the lips. And for lips, let's go in with this Wet n Wild Mega Cat Suit in the shade Rebel Rose. And there we are with the final look. Nice and simple. So I'm going to wear this all for a few hours. I will see you then. And we are back. It has been about five hours and both sides do look pretty damn good. This is a long wearing foundation, but honestly, I still gotta hand it to this side. Like it just looks so much smoother and better to me. What do you think? Both sides to me do look really, really good. Like this is a great foundation, but this side just looks so much more expensive and younger. There is still a bit of creasing underneath both eyes. I mean, I do squint and do this a lot, so that does make sense. But if I had to say which side had less creasing on it, I think I would say this side. Like this side isn't that bad, but it does have creasing that goes way out to there. Whereas this one, it stops right underneath the eye right there. In all honesty, with all joking aside, I thought this was going to be another gimmicky tool that really didn't work but I'm actually kind of surprised it does work. Yes, it is kind of on the pricier side, so you do have to judge whether it's worth it or not, but personally, I do think it's worth it. Like, it did exactly what it said. I think it made my foundation look really fucking good. The concealer, it just blended out normally, but that powder, it like put it deep into the skin, and I think that's what really, really helped. It took a product that I already fucking adore and is super cheap and turned it into something really, really expensive looking. Now I'm kind of curious to see how this will look with my really expensive foundations, like my Dior Air Flash that already makes your skin look airbrushed. I want to know if this can somehow make it look even better. So I will keep using this in future tutorials, but do I recommend this? Honestly, if you can afford it, I do. Even me, who is a true born cheap ass, thinks that this is worth the money, so that is seriously saying something. I will definitely link you to this down below. No, I am not an affiliate. I don't get anything for you ordering this product, but I honestly do really fucking love this. If you have the money to spend and you're looking for a good tool to add to your makeup collection, I mean, this. But there you go. Like always, please be sure to hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Nightlight, which does glow in the dark, is available at thepoplux.com. Also, my latest single, One Last Night, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting it. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepoplux.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye.